Hi, welcome to Moo Moo Math. Today we're going to talk about the binomial theorem and, and learn how to do binomial expansion. So let me write that down for you. Binomial expansion. Okay, so the, what that means is we're going to take a binomial and we're going to expand it, which means just to multiply it. So it's going to look like this, a binomial and we're going to raise it to a power, a binomial, and we're going to raise it to a power. So let's kind of review how you've learned how to do this up to this point. Okay, so you've got x plus 3 squared. So what you're going to do is you're going to write x plus 3 twice, and then you're going to do what most teachers teach, which is FOIL it. So you do first, outer, inner, and last, right? And then you combine the two middle terms to x squared plus 6x plus 9. Okay, so what happens though when you have a binomial and it's raised to a, a degree higher than 2, like cubed? Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to write down three of them this time and expand them. So what do you do? Well, you ignore one and you FOIL the first set, right? So you do x squared minus, and I'll do outer and inner at the same time, so 4x, and then last is plus 4. So that's what x minus 2 quantity squared would look like when you FOIL it and combine the center. And then we're going to take that times that third term, so you've got x squared times x, which is x cubed, x squared times 2 is, or negative 2 is negative 2x squared, then negative 4 times x is negative 4x squared. Negative 4x times negative 2 is positive 8x. And then 4 times x is 4x. And 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. So you end up with all these terms. And then we have to combine the like terms. So let's bring down the x cubed. Let's combine these to negative 6x squared. Combine these to positive 12x and then bring down that constant of negative 8. So we end up with uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 terms in our answer. Okay, so there is an easier way to expand these, and it was discovered by Pascal. So I'm going to show you the first step, which is just Pascal's triangle and how he found the coefficients. Okay, so if we're looking at the coefficients of this one, it's 1, negative 6, 12, and negative 8. Okay, so we're looking at those coefficients in the triangle. So when you raise, um, expand something, a binomial to the zero degree, you get one. When you expand a binomial to the first degree, the coefficients would just be one and one because that's just one. Okay, when you expand a binomial to the second degree, the coefficients are going to end up being one two and one. Okay, so what the pattern is here is these two above this position add up to this term. So what's going to happen is we're going to keep adding ones to the outsides, but to get the inside terms, we're going to add the two above it together, and that's how we get the next row. So this is expanding to the third power, okay? What happens when we expand to the fourth power? What are the coefficients going to be? Well, the first one's going to be a 1. These two add to a 4. These two add to a 6. These two add to a 4. And then we bring the 1 down. So you can see you can expand this as far as you want to. Let's do one more row of coefficients. To the fifth power would be 1, 5, 10, 10, 5 and 1. And notice it is symmetric. So you can see the symmetry within the triangle. So you can actually fill this out to any degree that you need to. Okay, so that's the first part is learning to expand and understanding coefficients. The second thing we need to look at in expanding is the actual terms, not just the coefficients, but looking at the terms themselves. Okay, so when we have an x plus y to the zero degree, we get one. When we raise it to the first degree, we're going to get x plus y. When we raise it to the second degree, when we FOIL it out, we're going to get x plus two, I'm sorry, x squared plus two xy plus y squared. 
So, and then the third one, we're going to get x cubed plus 3x squared y plus 3xy squared plus y cubed. Okay, and we're going to keep, we can keep going. But there's some patterning with these um, variables, with the terms. Okay, the first term is going to be, notice on this squared one, we're going to have a second degree but then it decreases by one to a first degree and then we don't even have that first term here. Whereas this last term, notice we don't see it in the first term, but then it appears in the second term and then it's squared in the third term. So there's some rules I wanna go over on this expansion, how these exponents work, okay? Here are the rules for the exponents. For uh, x plus y, that's our binomial raised to whatever nth power, you're gonna have n plus one terms. So if this is five, we're gonna have six terms in our answer. If this is three, we're gonna have four terms in our answer. So it's n plus one terms. Pascal's triangles are the nth row. So we looked at up here, okay, the zero power, that's the zero row. First power, here's the first row. Second power, this is considered the second row. Third power, this is the third row, okay? Uh, the first term is always x to the nth power. So if you have um, eight and eight here, then the first term is gonna be x to the eighth, okay? That's for the first term. And then what's gonna happen is this first term is gonna decrease by one degree, one uh, the exponent each time it's gonna go be descending versus the last term, this y value, it's gonna start off as y to the zero. Well, we know y to the zero is equal to what? One, so it's we're not gonna see it in the first term and it's gonna increase by a degree all the way to the last term. And then the sum of the exponents is always n. So if this is a five, this is a zero because they add to fifth term. If this is a uh, four, and this is a one, then it would add to a five. So you can see these exponents will always add up to whatever nth row we're in. Okay, so let's try expanding one so you can see this pattern. Okay, we have to put both Pascal's triangle together, so we need to know Pascal's triangle, and then we need to follow that exponent rule, and if we put those together, whoops, exponent rule, we put those together, we're gonna end up with the, the answer to the expansion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by figuring out what are my coefficients for row three. Well, let's go back and look at Pascal's triangle, how he expanded. So row three looks like this, one, three, three, one. Those are the coefficients for the row. So I'm going to write that down, one, three, three, and one. Okay, and notice there are one, two, three, four terms. Didn't we say we have one more term than the degree? So the number of terms, and the answer is n plus one. So we'll have four terms in this one. Okay, now, second thing we need to do is look at our first term. It's gonna start off being x cubed, and that's gonna be decrease x squared, x, and then x to the zero. Now the last term, we're gonna increase. But we know for the first term, it starts at zero. The second term, it's gonna increase to the first power. Third term, we're gonna increase it to the second power. And the fourth term, it's gonna be uh, increased to the third power. Okay, now let's put these columns together and create the final answer, okay? So one times x cubed times two to the zero, when well, we know two to the zero is one. So the first term is just gonna be x cubed. Now the second term, we have a three times an x squared times two to the first. Well, two to the first is two times three is six x squared, and these are all positive. Third term is gonna be three times x times two squared. Well, we know two squared is four, so it's gonna give us plus 12 x. And then 1 times x to the 0, well, we know that's 1, so that's going to be plus 8. There we go. There is the final answer in the expansion, okay? So that was our first example. Let's look at one that has a negative sign in it. 
Oh, no, let's look at one that has uh, a higher degree. We're going to go with a higher degree first. Okay, so we are in row five. So let's go back to the triangle we created. Let's look at row five. We have one, two, three, four, five, six terms. That's correct. They go one, five, ten, ten, five, one. Those are my coefficients. So I'm going to write those down. One, five, ten, ten, five, one. Okay, I'm going to uh, start with my x and raise it to the fifth power, and then to the fourth, and then to the third, then to the second, then to the first, and then to the zero. I'm going to take my y and I'm going to decrease y to the zero, or increase y to the first, y to the second, y to the third, y to the fourth, and y to the fifth. This is positive, so all these terms will be positive. Now let's go down under each column and write each term. So that's going to be x to the fifth. Five times these is going to be plus five x to the fourth y. Combining all those, that's going to be ten, give me 10x cubed y squared. This is going to give me 10x squared y cubed. This is going to give me five xy to the fourth. And this last one is going to give me five or y to the fifth. Now, let's look at the coefficients, or the exponents. These exponents add to five, 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 and that one's a five. So you always want to double check and make sure your exponents are adding up correctly. Okay, so there's an expansion. That one was with all positives. What if we took x minus 2y cute okay i'm going to change this a little bit we are now going to throw in a negative and a coefficient on that back term okay what's going to happen well we're on row three so let's go to row three that's one three three one we're going to have four terms and they're the coefficients okay let's start off with the first term x cubed x squared x and x to the zero now the second term is going to get a little tricky. Okay, we know that this is a negative 2y to the 0 power. Then it's going to be a negative 2y to the first power. Then a negative 2y to the second power. And a negative 2y to the third power. So you have to be careful because what's going to happen is we're going to have some alternating signs here depending on what degree. Um, this third, second term is being raised to. Well, we know anything to the zero power is one, so that's just going to be one. This one's going to end up being a negative 2y. This one, though, is going to end up being a positive, what, 4y. And this last one is going to be a negative 8y. Okay, so we have to be careful before we write these down. Now let's bring all this down. It's going to give me x cubed as my first term. This one's going to give me 3 times negative 2, which is negative 6, x squared, and y to the first power. This next one what's, is going to give me, uh, well, this negative, negative 2 y squared is going to be positive 4 y squared. Okay, so that's going to give me, once I multiply this column together, there, positive 12 x y squared. And this last one, we know anything to zero power is one. And so that's going to give me negative eight y cubed all times one. So just negative eight y cubed. Okay, and there's our final answer. Now notice the terms. We have a positive term, a negative term, a positive term, and a negative term. So they're alternating whenever we're, we're expanding a negative um, a subtraction in our binomial. Okay. okay.